The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God brief, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the men of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Welcome everyone, especially our subscribers, followers, and fellow believers. In preparation for our study of the Word of God, the next few moments will be devoted to silent prayer. Let us prepare ourselves for the study of the Word of God. Therefore, let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we are here once again because we love the Word, because we are members of your royal family through our faith in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are here to continue studying your word, and uh, we recognize that this is our briefing, this is our means of growth, this is the means of glorifying thee. We now pray that you give us the necessary concentration and focus to the things you are going to teach us today. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, we are still concentrating on our study of the doctrine of phase two life, the uh, post-salvation spiritual life. Okay, yesterday we said in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, to do good works, as we have said, means God's prime purpose for every believer. Now, here are some more points of doctrine of salvation which every believer should be guided with. Salvation is grace. Noah was preaching the gospel for 120 years. That can be... Uh, found in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. During Noah's time, people were negative towards the gospel. The ark that he built, as per God's instruction, was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ is the door. He who enters in through that door will be saved. John 10, 9. An unbeliever is a spiritually blind person and worse, a spiritually dead person. Now, have you seen a blind person? The Lord Jesus Christ said, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Luke 18.42 And have you seen a dead person? Well, the Word of God says in John 3, 36, He who believes in the Son, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, has eternal life. But he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. John 3, 3 says, Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Matthew 8, 22, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. Now here is an interesting illustration of salvation made by our Lord Jesus Christ. The Exodus generation, people of Israel, on their way to or on their way from Egypt to the Promised Land, were bitten by snakes. They were suffering and dying. So Moses, their leader, lifted up a serpent made of brass. Moses said, if you look at that serpent, 
You will be saved. You will be healed. Numbers 21.8 Just look and be saved, he said. Think of it. That was all that they needed to do, to look. It is true, thousands of them did, and they were saved. But there were also thousands of them who did not. They thought that it was too simple or easy believism. And that is the way some people may think about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You think about the cross and the resurrection and you say, it's too simple. It cannot possibly be true. It's too easy. Again, they call it easy believism. You see, man has no excuse. He might say, I did not know God because nobody ever told me. That's why I should not be sent to the lake of fire. Well, let this person who says that read Romans 1, 18 to 20. In verse 18, it says, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of man who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Verse 19, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. Verse 20, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Now, heathens are heathens, not because they don't know that God exists, they just reject. You see, an atheist from Greek, Atheos, says that there is no God. That's a lie. An agnostic from Greek, Anosis, says, I don't know there is a God. That's also a lie. Actually, there is no such thing as atheists or agnostics. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and they, the atheists and agnostics, cannot deny that. In fact, the existence of God is the source of the entire universe and everything in it. So we can say that everybody has knowledge of God. Truthfully, a person who denies the existence of God and uh, thus rejects the gospel is actually making God a liar. Besides, he who rejects the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior is committing the unpardonable sin. Matthew 12, 31-32 Rejection of Christ as Savior is a maladjustment to the justice of God. A person who rejects Christ is resisting God's will. A person who rejects Christ is his own worst enemy. You see, unbelievers are eternal losers. Christ himself said, It is better off for an unbeliever to have never been born. All rejections of truth is arrogance. The worst conceivable way to die is not to die of murder or of figuring a horrible accident, die of cancer, no. It is to die as an unbeliever. That's the worst conceivable way to die. By the way, the only way and only way to be saved is through faith on the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Our Lord said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. We will continue this discussion tomorrow. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of studying your word once again and for the wonderful privilege of examining these things together. 
We pray that you will bring us here tomorrow once again so we can continue in our spiritual momentum. May God the Holy Spirit then challenge us to persist in our study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbido Evangelistic Ministry. For we ask this in Christ's name. Amen.